Uh, 19, Sean, if I had one other marking on this top, on this rhombus would transform it into a square. Just one right angle. Perfect. So does everyone see the two different ways to create a square? Show a rectangle with two sides, consecutive sides equal, or show a rhombus, which we did yesterday, that has a right angle. Both will lead you to a square. All right. So you would just need a, so I'm sorry, I didn't catch the meaning of that. A rectangle with two congruent consecutive sides or a rhombus. With a right angle. right angle, correct. That is good enough to say you have a square. That is the bare, I should say this, that's the bare minimum to say you have a square. All right, that's the minimum amount of information to say you have a square. All right, so let's try an algebra problem right now involving a square. All right, so let's get a square out here. Make this look official. So I have a square. One diagonal is the length of 16. So let's draw in one diagonal here. It's got a length of 16, perfect. Find the perimeter, okay? Find the perimeter of this square. Find the perimeter. Okay, well, I do know all four sides are equal of a square, all four sides are equal. So if I'm gonna ask you guys to find the perimeter, I'm just writing some thoughts down here. That would mean four sides times one side length. Doesn't matter which side you find, because they're all equal. Here's, I, here's where I need your help. How do I find a side length? Well, just knowing that the diagonal is 16. That's where I'm gonna need you guys to come in today. How can I find a side length if I just know a diagonal 16? Well, it is a square. Every single property we know applies to the square. All right, I'm just gonna turn it over to you guys and let you guys lead the way. How can I find, what other, oh, let me start here. What other properties could I use here that might help me find the side of a square? What other properties do I have available to me that may help? Diagonals are congruent. Di okay, so Maeve, are you telling me I should draw on the other diagonal then? Yes. Okay, you got it. There's multiple ways of doing this problem, which is awesome. So Maeve says, hey, why don't we draw in the other diagonal because I know that one also has to be a length of 16. All right, both diagonals are drawn in. Remember, I'm trying to get to the side. I know both diagonals are 16. Keep going. Any other properties that might help me out now that both diagonals are drawn in? Rectangles have right angles. Maybe. Say that again. Maybe rectangles have right angles. Well, all squares have right angles, right? Yeah. So I have a right angle at every corner here. Okay. Still looks like I need more here to figure out a side length. Keep going here, guys. Keep going. Diagonals bisect each other. Oh, okay. They bisect each other. So. If each diagonal was 16, that must mean each of these pieces is going to be 8. Yep, everything is 8, 8, 8, right? I'll keep just throwing the other 8s. Why not? Okay, great. You're, you guys are using your properties. Almost there. Almost there to find a side. Any other properties that will help me out? I'm almost there. Uh, I could, yes. Okay, so Radhika's bringing in Pythagorean theorem, but I need right triangles to do Pythag. If you guys want to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I'm on board, but you got to show me where a right triangle is now. All diagonals are uh, perpendicular. Diagonals are perpendicular in a square, right? Oh, okay. So let me take this right triangle here. I'm going to highlight in yellow. It looks like I can do Pythagorean theorem on that right triangle. How did we get there? Using all those darn properties. Diagonals are congruent. They bisect each other. They're perpendicular. Now I can do Pythag. So eight squared plus eight squared, and the side across from the right angle is the side I'm looking for, so that's C squared. 64 and 64 equals c squared let's keep trucking 
buck 28 equals c squared take the square root of both sides oh it's been so long since i've asked this question and i know you've missed it but what class are we all enrolled in yes honors geometry honors so i don't want you to do the square root of 128 on your calculator and give me that darn sloppy decimal we're breaking this sucker down let's go biggest perfect square that goes into 128 and i'll make your lives easy we already found it and the work we did biggest perfect square that goes into 128 already found it that perfect square is 64 from above 64 times 2 and by the way now I'm sure you're gonna be so happy to hear this I just uh, finished the packet for next unit and day one we got a big review of uh, radic simplifying radicals again so it's coming back next unit I know that's hap makes you happy Eight radical two. Eight radical two. But that's not my perimeter. That's the side length. Side length, right, guys? Side length. We're going to take that and multiply it by four. So four times eight radical two. And all you need to do when you multiply those two is just multiply that. You can't multiply anything with the radical, but you can multiply the numbers out in front, four and eight. So the perimeter of this square, 32, radical two. There's the perimeter of this square, 32, radical two, boom. Are we all right? And yes, since we are in honors, I don't want to overlook the other way of doing this. Here you go, ready? Here is your diagonal of 16. Remember, all squares are, have right angles. All sides are equal, so we could have said x and x and done Pythagorean theorem this way. x squared plus x squared equals 16 squared and did it that way too. So there, that was an alternative way of using Pythag to get to the side line. All right, looking good. All right, coordinate proof now with a square. Coordinate proof with a square. So I'll give you a second, I'll give them, so I can do it as well, so we can graph this square, P. Okay, so prove to me that this is a square. We have two options. Just go back to the top of your notes for today. Two options. We can first prove it's a rectangle or we can first prove it's a rhombus. Either way, we're either gonna start this proof out by saying it's a, we're gonna prove it's a rectangle by showing it's got four right angles or we're gonna show it's a rhombus by showing all four sides congruent. Usually I let the class pick, but I kind of have a good feeling of what kids like to do, and that's to show it's a rhombus. Because I think you guys like to deal with four distance formulas and you're done instead of using the slope formula. But so that's what we're going to do right now. First thing is we're going to show it's a rhombus. What, what formula am I going to need to show that this is a rhombus? Uh, let's go seven here. Sinjin, what formula am I going to need here to show that this is a rhombus from yesterday? Distance formula. So here we or Pythag, whatever your preference is. So here we go. Show the distance formula you're about to use. X2, 
minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Everyone see our plan here? I'm gonna prove this as a rhombus just like I did yesterday in class. And then we're gonna show it's got a right angle somewhere. That's my goal. Okay, number two, use the distance formula, right? So we're gonna find the distance of QR, RS, SP, and PQ. And for time's sake, and heck, it is the holiday season, right, kids? So a uh, little gift here for me to you, I'll do it for you. You'd get three squared plus four squared underneath. You guys can figure out what it's gonna be, but that's what you're gonna get underneath all these distances is four squared and three squared when you do your subtraction. <laughs> Not like dad's trying to teach. Hey, everyone, hey, everyone knows you got your boots on. You can go now. All right. One job around. So hopefully you're finishing up at least one of them right now. What are you getting for the uh, side length here? Two five. Sabrina, when you're ready, what are you getting for one side length? Uh, QR is five. Yep, good job. And that's what all the side lengths end up being. And I mentioned yesterday, you still got to show your work. You can't just throw down a five spot for the rest of the sides because you know it should be five. Got to show the work how you got there. And what I'm showing up on the screen right now is bare minimum, probably what you would need to show. All right, so all the sides came out to be five. I now am confident that I can call PQRS a rhombus. Because all sides are congruent. Unfortunately, it didn't ask me for a rhombus, right? It asked me for a square. So remind me and your classmates one more time. How do I make this rhombus into a square? Show it has what else? 16. Kyla, show it has what else? It has at least one right angle. Correct. And then going to somebody else, how do I, sh what formula do I need to show it has a right angle? 12. Lucas, what formula do I need to show? Not here. Here we go, somebody else. Two, Quincy, what formula do I need to show right angles? We used it yesterday in class to show an angle, right angle is formed. You need to find the useful formula to prove them uh, perpendicular. Good, so here we go, step four. You're gonna show me you're about to use the slope formula, whether it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or rise over run, which I'm a big fan of. You don't have to be a big fan of it. You can use Y2 minus Y1 if you want. And good news here. You only, guys, you only need one right angle for me. Don't start getting nuts and show me all angles are right angles. I don't need that much information. Bare minimum, I need one right angle. So what you need to do right now is decide on two adjacent sides and find their slopes. You don't want to do two opposite sides because th those won't be form right angles two adjacent sides. So I'm going to pick PS and I'm going to pick SR. And hopefully if I've graphed it correctly, their slopes will be negative reciprocal. So let's see, PS, rise one, two, three, four over one, two, three. So four over three for PS. Take a quick glance back at my at PS on my diagram. It's going downhill. So I got to ensure that that's negative. SR, rise over run, one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, three over four. Oh, love it. Negative four thirds and three fourths. That's a little something we like to call negative reciprocals in this class. Now here's where you gotta be careful. You did not prove you have a right angle yet. Just by showing that PS and SR are negative reciprocals does not show you have a right angle. It shows PS 
and SR are perpendicular. That's what it proves because slopes are negative reciprocals. And now that they're perpendicular, all right, all right. Now you have, for me, I have S as a right angle. because perpendicular lines form right angles. <laughs> and now we have just transformed PQRS into a square. And I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. And yes, proving a square is the most amount of work you have to do. Rhombus rectangle, not a big deal. Parallelogram, not a big deal. But when I ask for a square, that it does require the most work. PQRS is a square. And I'm going to turn the reason over to you guys. Why? I want to make sure you got the correct information. So tell me what we just did in this proof. Why is this now a square? Let's hear from one, six. Kyla, back to you. Why is this a square now? It has at least two consecutive sides, and it has a right, a right angle. Okay, so let's put that those two together here. It's a rhombus. PQRS is, is a square because it is a rhombus, which is what we proved at first. It is a rhombus with one right angle. Got to mention it's a rhombus because if you guys just say because it has one right angle, I could show you a lot of four-sided figures that have one right angle and it's not a square. The fact that it's a rhombus with the right angle makes it a square. How we feel about uh, the old square here, the golden child? Questions? Yes, it is a lot of work to prove a square. Anything before we get to the other side of the family, which is the black sheep, the outcasts. Here it is, the kite, the good old kite. If you remember on the tree, it was all the way by itself because it has no sides parallel. There are no parallel sides in a kite, but hey, the darn thing still got some properties to it. Right? It's still got some properties. So you guys see the markings I put on the kite here. It does have two pairs of sides that are congruent. It's just that they're not opposite each other. Does everyone see kite A, B, C, D here? They do have two pairs of congruent sides. They're just not opposite each other like the parallelograms. And that's the first property. It has two sets of, a, of congruent adjacent sides. No, no, same thing. Two sets of congruent adjacent sides. They do not have any opposite sides congruent. So that's already marked on your diagram. Uh, pro oh, go ahead, question. Never mind. Property number two. One pair of congruent angles. One pair of congruent angles. All right, let's talk. Where? Where are those congruent angles? They are the two. They're the two angles formed by the non-congruent sides. Let me say that again because I'm going to ask somebody to find them on my diagram. They are the two, the two angles that are congruent in a kite are the ones that are formed by the non-congruent sides. Right, those are the two. So if you guys look at my diagram on your packet, what two angles am I referring to? The two that are formed by the non-congruent sides. Uh, let's see here. Sean, one nine, what two angles am I referring to here? B and D, correct. What's up? Okay. Um, I'm going to put a plate over there for you. Okay, so those are the pairs of angles, the ones that are formed by the non-congruent sides. 
All good? All right, property number three. Kites have diagonals. And these diagonals in a kite share the same property as the rhombus diagonals. Diagonals are perpendicular, perpendicular. Okay, diagonals are perpendicular. And the fourth property we're gonna come up together. We're gonna to come up uh, with this together, kids. What I'd like you to do right now, if you haven't drawn in your diagonals, that might help for this fourth property. If you have not drawn them in already, please do. Please look at these two triangles up here. I'm gonna label mine triangle one and triangle two right there. Please take a look at those. Those two triangles are congruent and I need somebody to help me out. By what method? Oh, here we go. What method are those two, why are those two triangles congruent? By what method? And if it helps, I'll put the other right angle in on the other side here. Anybody know, anybody wanna take a wild guess here? Oh, little HL, Omni, all right, I see you. Yes, HL. They share this reflexive side. The two congruent sides of the kite are the hypotenuses, and it's in a right triangle. So everybody see the HL. So they're congruent by HL, which means CPCTC says this diag, the shorter diagonal here is getting bisected by CPCTC, and that is the fourth property, that the longer diagonal, they do not bisect each other, do not bisect each other, but the longer diagonal bisects the shorter one. Diag. Longer diagonal bisects the shorter diagonal. Okay. They do not bisect each other, just the longer one bisects the shorter one, and we just proved that by CPCTC. Do you guys have any questions on the four properties here? Any questions? Emily, I got eight minutes, okay, and then I'll give you some more, all right? Nothing? All right, let's apply it to some algebra ones, and first period, we didn't get to the coordinate proof at the end of the notes, but that's fine with me if we don't. I just want to at least get through the algebra questions regarding the kite. Number one, find angles one and two. Look back at your properties. What do you know about angles one and two? What do you know about angles one and two? Nine, here we go. Audrey, what do you know about angle one and not, one and two there, Audrey? They're congruent. Darn right they are. So at least I know angle one and two are gonna be the same measure. The question is, how do I get there? I know one and two are the same, and I was given 101 and 48. Huh. Uh, all right, so let me keep moving on to you guys. Let me keep asking more questions. Uh, 18, here we go. Owen, this is this is a four-sided figure, Owen. So how many degrees are in it? Yeah, th guys, there's still 360. I could call it a kite, a square, a rectangle. There's 360 degrees in every four-sided figure. So now I could say, hey, 101 plus the 48 you gave me. 101 plus the 48 that was given, plus angle one I'll call X, and plus angle two, which I'll call X, because they're both congruent, have to add to 360. Yes, indeed. So you guys can go ahead, crunch the numbers. I'll ask somebody what you got for angles one and two.
when you're ready. Two six, Emma, when you're ready. Um, 105.5. Be confident, yes, 105 and a half degrees. We do get decimals around here in honors geometry, it happens. Good job, guys. All right, let's go to number two now. Now I have now I'm responsible for three angles. Uh, I'm just going to ask somebody angle one right off the bat. Properties of a kite will get you angle one. Properties of a kite will get angle one. Uh, let's go one five. Will, what do you got for me, Will? Angle one is ninety degrees. Done. Diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Done. All right, let's look at angle two now. Angle two, I am not going to use any properties of a kite to find angle two. You can use some other geometry facts to find angle two. Uh, any thoughts here? Thoughts on angle two? What do we got here? Will, going to you again, double time for you. The diagonals are perpendicular, so um, you could do 180 minus... 90 minus 27. Good. Will's, hey, everyone doesn't know, Will's using this triangle right here. 90 and 27 are already there. Subtract the two from 180. What do you got for me, Will? When you're ready. 63 degrees. Six, good job. 63 degrees. So angle two, I'll just mark it on my diagram as 63. And then we get to angle three. Oh, I love finding angle three. Uh, I don't know if anybody can see it or not, but how can I find angle three? Because, hey, yeah, I could put another 90 degrees over here, but now I'm like 90. I'm not given another angle. Do I assume that if that's 27, the other side's 27 and they bisect? I, I don't know. I don't want to say that because I'm not too sure. But there is a proven way we could find angle three. A proven way. Anybody want to chime in on this one? Go ahead, Emily, what do you got? Would it be 63 degrees because you have um, congruent sides or across from congruent angles? Awesome. Hey, everyone, take a look at the top triangle. I'm doing in brown right now. Hi, I'm an isosceles triangle, right? I'm isosceles. Emily just said, what's across from the congruent sides? Congruent angles. Yes, there you go, Emily. Right, so hey, in a kite, you have two isosceles triangles that are formed, remember. In a kite, two isosceles triangles can be formed. Good job, let's finish this off strong before we call it a, a break. Number three. Uh, number two, I thought that it was 63 only because the two kind of triangles were congruent. You could do it that way too. Hey, we just, you can show those two triangles are congruent. CPCTC would say, that's 27 as well. You could subtract it from 180. Or just like you said, Sophia, that's 63 degrees by CPCTC. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Number three. Oh, boy. We got to find X now. Yikes. Well, what do we know? We know diagonals are perpendicular. So I can at least throw some right angles in. Also, this top triangle is isosceles, isn't it, guys? That's isosceles. So if that angle's 8x, the other angle, the other base angle has to be 8x. And does everyone see a triangle where I know now know all three angles? Diagonals are perpendicular, so I got a right angle, 90. Plus the other base angle in the isosceles triangle had to be 8x plus 8x. And then the 5x minus 1 was already given. And I know all three angles add up to 180. And then you guys grind away on that one and... I'll ask one final question for 2020. Well, you don't see that one. I don't know, will we? Yeah. I don't know. 
hopefully we're back together. All right, here we go. Value of X when you find it. Going to the top. Number one, Vinny. What do you got for me, boss? When you're ready. I got seven. Darn right you did. And that's the way you end 2020. X equals seven. Okay. Uh, yes, there are problems after on page 37 and 38. But like I said on the assignment sheet, there's no homework over break. You guys just deserve to enjoy it with no math. All right. But get ready to go when we come back on the fourth, whether it's together in the class or remote again. Okay, guys. Have a great break. I'll see you after uh, we get back. You too, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Done? I'm done, you meatball. Now can I have more ones? Okay, Daddy. relax, relax. Daddy's just got to sign in to the next one. To the next class. So I gotta teach right away. I go from one to the next. Why? What? Why do you go one to, but to the next? Because that's what's on my schedule. Oh. I, Daddy teaches three classes right in a row before oh. he gets a so break. So this is your second? Yep. And I got another one right after it. Oh my gosh. I know. They're long. Yeah, they are long. Why are they long? That's what it is. At the high school, they're 40 minutes each. Oh my gosh. 40? Yep, four 